Hey lovelies, I know how real the struggle can be to get a healthy, hearty dinner on the table on a busy weeknight. So all month long, I'm going to be sharing nutritious, delicious dinner ideas I think you guys are going to love. And today I've got three healthy seafood ideas that I am absolutely loving right now. Just before we get to today's recipes, I wanted to share some really exciting news with you guys. My friend Alicia from Mind Over Munch and I have teamed up to create a brand new YouTube channel, Friday Night Supper Club, and we are sharing the first episode today. I'm so excited. We've been working on this project for the last little while. We had such a blast making it. There's hilarity, there's hijinks, there's a whole lot of wine, and of course, as always, delicious food. <gasps> what? I don't know how I would eat another store-bought eclair ever again. We are impressive, what can I say? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, so be sure to leave a comment if you check it out, and I will, of course, link it in the description box below. Now, without further ado, let's get to our tasty seafood dinners, starting with this amazing Cajun shrimp skillet. Now I have to say, this is an absolute dream on a busy weeknight. It comes together in less than 10 minutes on the stove, and I like to even maximize my time further by chopping all of my vegetables during my Sunday meal prep. As with so many of my recipes, I am starting with a nice hot skillet on the stove. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of oil. You also have the option to add some butter here. That would be really tasty. Once your oil is nice and hot, you can start adding your veggies. So I've got some onion, some celery, and some bell pepper. We're going to let these veggies cook up for between three and four minutes. We just wanna let them soften up. Once those are nice and tender, we can go ahead and add our garlic to the pan. Then we can follow that with our corn. I've got about a pound of shrimp here. I'm using some nice large shrimp that have already been peeled. I know peeled shrimp are a little more expensive at the supermarket, but it really does cut down on the time you're spending in the kitchen. So I always think it's worth it. Totally up to you though. And then finally, we will add our Cajun seasoning. Now I will fully admit in this case, I am using some store-bought Cajun seasoning, but you always have the option to make it homemade. It's actually a lot easier than you might think, and I have a great recipe for it on the channel. I'll link it in the description box below. We'll season this with some salt and some pepper, give it a good toss, and then pop the lid on. We wanna let our shrimp cook up in all of those amazing flavors. You'll know your shrimp's ready when it's nice and pink and opaque. It'll take between four and five minutes to get to that point. And there you have it. I finish it off with a squeeze of fresh lime juice and a little bit of cilantro. This is really healthy, but also really filling, not to mention wildly flavorful. Don't believe me? I hope you will try it for yourself. Next, I am making a super satisfying seafood chowder. And yes, it is chowda. My grandmother's family hails from Maine, and that's how it's pronounced, where they come from. I'm starting, in this case, with my nice big Dutch oven on the stove. To that, I am going to add some butter and let it melt away. Once that butter is nice and melted, we can go ahead and add some onion and a little bit of celery. I have to admit, one of my favorite smells in the kitchen is butter, onion, and celery frying up on the stove. It is the best. Once that onion has softened up and that celery is nice and bright green, we can go ahead and add our potatoes to the pot. I'm using some russet potatoes here. I just peeled them and cubed them and into the pot they go. Next, I'm going to add a few tablespoons of flour. Now the flour in this recipe is going to help thicken up our soup and make sure that it gets nice and creamy, almost stew-like. Once my flour has cooked up for about a minute and it's lost that really strong flour taste, we can go ahead and add our liquids. Today, I'm using a combination of chicken broth and seafood broth in this recipe. You always have the option to use only seafood broth, but I find using the combination adds a nice savory flavor. If you can't find seafood broth at your supermarket, not to worry, you always have the option to use clam juice instead. That can usually be found in the same aisle as the canned tuna. Now that I've got my broth in the pot, it's time to add my milk as well. This, of course, is gonna be a nice, rich, creamy chowder. I'm going to give all this yumminess a good stir, and then it's time to get our seasoning on. Today, it is all about the Old Bay seasoning. 
If you're not familiar with Old Bay seasoning, it is seriously flavorful. It can be found in the spice aisle at most supermarkets, and it's really traditionally used with seafood and fish. It is amazing, and I think you will love it. I'm adding about a tablespoon to my pot, and then I'm also going to add one sprig of thyme. Not to worry about that stem, we'll go in and get it out later. I'm going to bring this whole mixture to a boil, and then once it's reached a boil, I will reduce the heat to medium and let it simmer away until those potatoes are nice and tender. We just wanna give them a chance to cook through. At this point, our potatoes are nice and soft. Things have thickened up dramatically, and it is time to just remove this time stem. And that means it is time to add our seafood. For this soup, I'm using a combination of haddock that I've cut into cubes, some peeled shrimp, as well as some lovely crab meat. You really, at this point, could use any combination of seafood you want. You could use some clams, some mussels. I've seen people add salmon to their seafood chowder. The world is really your oyster. Once all that deliciousness is in your pot, we're going to season it with some salt and some pepper. You wanna let it cook for another five minutes or so, and then it is ready to be enjoyed. I, of course, think this soup is best enjoyed with some crusty bread and a little bit of butter. Now it's time, my friends, to chow down on this chowda. Finally today, for something a little lighter and fresher, I am going to be making some sesame seared tuna steaks. If you love tuna, then you are going to want to stay tuna in. No, I got the most disapproving look from back there. Not happening. tuna in, get it? As the name suggests, this delicious recipe starts with some lovely tuna. I have these beautiful tuna steaks that I found in the seafood department at my supermarket. It's really important because we are going to be serving these tuna steaks rare that you use sushi grade tuna. You can ask your fishmonger at your supermarket what they suggest. We're basically going to be pan searing them, crusted in beautiful sesame seeds, but first we wanna make sure that they are well marinated in all sorts of deliciousness. And I am going to do that with one of my all time favorite marinades. This stuff is so good. It all starts with some soy sauce in my bowl. To that, I'm adding some rice vinegar and a little bit of sesame oil. Next, I'm going to build in my flavor with some ginger and a little bit of garlic and some brown sugar. What I love about this marinade is that it is so balanced in terms of flavor. So it's got tartness from lime juice that I'm adding now. It's got some saltiness from that soy sauce. We've got a little brown sugar for sweetness. Really good flavor balance. And you know, that's what I'm all about around here, flavor balance. Finally, I'm going to add some finely chopped green onion and then give this all a good whisk. Now, just before I start marinating my tuna steaks, I'm actually going to divide this mixture. The idea here is that I wanna reserve a little bit for dipping once this is actually cooked, and I can't actually use the marinade after it has touched the raw tuna, so I'm gonna divide it now at this point and set this aside so we can really enjoy it later. Once that tuna is swimming in that gorgeous marinade, we're just going to cover it and then get it into the refrigerator for at least an hour, but I would definitely say several hours would be ideal. So I have let this guy hang out for about two hours now and things have gotten really exciting. I know, it looks exactly the same as it did when it went in, but trust me, the flavor transfer has been epic. I'm just going to transfer my tuna into my bowl of sesame seeds and press them on the top, on the bottom, and on the sides until I've created a really beautiful crust for each. I like using a combination of white and black sesame seeds because I think the look is really dramatic and beautiful. To cook our tuna, we are going to fire up a nonstick skillet over medium high heat, and to that we are going to add some oil. In this case, I'm using sunflower oil because it has a really high smoke point, which means it can get very, very hot without smoking. Once that oil is nice and hot, you can transfer your tuna steak to the center of your pan. Now, if you enjoy tuna that is rare to medium rare, you'll only need to cook this for between one and two minutes per side. I know that's gonna feel a little strange, but trust me, that is the best way to do it. If you prefer your tuna a little more well done, what I suggest is once you've cooked it on two minutes per side in the pan, you can transfer it to a baking sheet and then put it in the oven at 400 degrees for between five and seven minutes or just until it's reached your desired doneness. 
The reason we do this is because if you leave that sesame crust in the pan for too long, you'll end up burning your sesame seeds and it won't be delicious. So you wanna make sure you only leave it max two minutes per side and then finish it off in the oven where it'll have a nice gentle heat. The final step is just slicing it up thinly and then serving it with that remaining dipping sauce. I like serving it with a little bit of rice and some broccoli, but you could certainly put it on a salad instead if you wanted to. Both would be really tasty. Guys, I hope you love these three ideas as much as I do and that you will give them a try in your own kitchens. If you do, as always, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo because I always love seeing your kitchen creations. Keep in mind that all of these recipes are in the description box below and that a brand new episode of Friday Night Supper Club is now up on mine and Alicia's new YouTube channel, so I hope you'll check it out. And finally, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more dinner deliciousness where this came from.